neighbors. Um, so in this episode, we're going to take a look at uh, what the deal is with our pine needle soda. Um, if you are a follower of Black Forager, um, you know, you may know if you caught her episode on this um, about pine needle soda, or maybe you already knew about it because you're awesome that way. Um, it was new to me, but I do live in a pine forest. And so I thought I would give it a try. Um, almost everything is dead around here, um, including most of the leaves on the ground. So it's very easy to find brand new um, pine. I, I think of them as droppings, um, the little the little bits of the branches that come off um, that day. And it's very easy to tell which ones are still fresh and which ones are not because they're against brown dead leaves. So um, these felt good to, good to go. They do have, um, finally, a little bit of bubble action kind of coming from the bottom. They had just a little bit of it the other day. I, I um, started these three days ago. This is some, um, you know, filtered water, da-da-da-da-da, all the, the usual the usual things about my water. Um, and this is two pretty good sized sprigs. Okay. So um, the pine needles here are pretty long, about, you know, a good five inches or so you can see there. And, um, and then on two different little spriggies, um, there is about this much of that spriggy taken up. So it's about an inch and a half's worth of sprig space of, of like limb space um, two times. And that's what gave me this amount. This is a quart jar. And we're going to open it um, a little bit. You can see there's still a lot of space for pressure to build up. I'm a little bit disappointed in that because it has been quite warm in here the past few days because it's been so stinking cold outside that I have had the heater on actually quite a lot more than I usually would. It's been um, pr very warm. Like, like um, I've had it up to like 75 degrees quite regularly. So that's quite warm. And, but you can see there's still a lot of space. So even though these are building um, uh, bubbles a little bit, it hasn't really fully activated yet, which is interesting. So we're going to open it and see what the deal is. Um, just to give you some perspective, this is, you know, about three and a half cups of water in here and um, a good, let me see if I've got, I don't have measurements on here. Um, not, not quite a cup of water or cup of sugar, but you know, a good like, two thirds uh, of cup. Now you can hear as I open that, there's no burp at all. There's no gas in here at all. So that tells me something, it tells me it's not really doing the thing. It does actually taste really good. Um, honestly, it tastes like gin without the alcohol, which is fascinating. Um, let me do a better taste here because tasting it at the top probably had more oils to it too since they live at the top of things. Mm. It's very good. Um, it's just mildly sweet. I think that was the right amount of sugar to put in there. Um, and it does taste kind of piney. I like it better than pine tea. Actually, I've made the pine needle teas before. I don't like how lemony they are. Um, they're just too bright a flavor to me when I'm expecting pine and then they don't give me pine. Um, this is a cleaner flavor. I like this a lot. And my body um, is sort of identifying this as like, oh, yeah, that's what I used to like about gin, you know. <laughs> um, so I suspect, as I've found in, in a lot of my fermentation work, um, I think when I used to drink um, things with alcohol in them, um, they always had these elements in there. They had the wild yeast or they had the juniper or they had the pine in there. And I think that's what I was actually interested in. That's what I was wanting. Um so that's really cool to know. So I'm just going to drink this like it is. I have no idea why it didn't sodify because Black Forager, hers sodified just fine. It got real fizzy. Um, this is not fizzy. And maybe it's because I did get it when it was so cold. I don't know. Um, you know, maybe some of the some of the yeast died off of there um, that would usually be on there. However, you know, even on the coldest night, I put some some liquid out on my porch and it never even froze. So, so I don't know, but anyway, I'm glad to have experimented with this with you all to make a video because, um, otherwise I probably would have stared at it for a long time and wondered when do I open it? Um, so good adventure. So if you have pine needles, um, just put a little sugar in there again, I did, you know, probably, and keep in mind a really good quality sugar that's going to, um, uh, dissolve real easily. So you want an organic evaporated cane sugar. 
um, that's going to go in there real nicely. Um, and you just shake it, shake, shake it. And, and then put those needles in there. It's a really lovely drink. And I have, you know, the better part of two cups in there for, you know, free ish. So hope that helps. Let me know if you, um, if you do your own, let me know what it does.